Now let's talk a little bit about schematics. Schematics can be a little scary, but when working with an Arduino and building simple circuits, they're really not that bad. I'm gonna talk about just some of my tips and tricks for reading them and implementing them in your prototyping projects. You can go online, there is tons of information out there on what they look like, what do they mean, how do I read them? Speaking of which, let's head over to Wikipedia really quick. and search up electronic symbols. And you can see right here, diode, capacitor, inductor, resistor, DC voltage. They have all the basics listed. So we're gonna start by just doing a quick demo of a circuit. If I were to draw something like this, What does that mean? Looks like a little bit of gibberish. Well, with a little more information here, we can see, according to Wikipedia, if I scroll down here, I can see, first of all, that this right here is a diode, and this with the little arrows is a light-emitting diode. So we know this is an LED. We know that this is the cathode and this is the anode. We know that anode is positive, cathode is negative. We also know that this symbol should be right here. This is a battery multi-cell. If we look right here, that's a single cell battery and it's three volts. So what is that schematic? Well, here it is. Here's the battery, positive side, positive side of an LED. There's your circuit. Not that bad. Now here's a couple of tips and tricks when reading circuits. Number one, when you see lines drawn in a schematic, if there's a dot, it means they're connected. If there's no dot, it means they're connected. If there is a little arch like this, it means that this wire, wire number one, is not connected to wire number two. Now, here's where it gets a little tricky. When you start integrating things like, say, a 555 timer, or an integrated circuit, or even a microcontroller or AT Tiny. Typically, a 555 timer has eight pins on it. Now, if we were looking at one of these, this would be pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we know that because there's typically on an integrated circuit a dot in the upper left hand corner indicating pin one, or there's a little arch on the top of the chip indicating the top. Now you would think that if I needed, say, in, a, in this circuit, and I don't know what these are, if I needed pin two to connect to pin seven, I might do this. And my diagram might look something like this. But here's the tip and trick. When writing integrated circuits, no matter what it is, they might just go like this, and they might go like this, and say this is pin seven, and they might just do this. Even though we know pin one should be here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they will write the numbers wherever it's convenient, wherever the diagram can be drawn in its simplest form. So if I had, again, an eight pin microcontroller or timer or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, I might see on the inside three, five, seven, one, two, and four. And you might see a diagram that looks something like this. And this means that pin four is connected to pin seven. Now we know that if that was the actual microcontroller, it would look like this. This is pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So seven to go to four would actually look like this. But that might not be as elegant to draw this way. So something to keep an eye out for is when you're looking at a diagram, make sure you read what pins are going to what part of the integrated circuit. Another thing to look out for, Arduino is tricky. Arduino, the software interprets pins differently than you would write them. So on an Arduino, and this is gonna be easier to explain when I log in. An Arduino, we might have 16 pins on the, on the chip. This would be pin one, pin 16 would be here. But when you are actually working in Arduino, when you say pin three high or pin three read or pin seven or eight or 15, whatever it is, 
On the diagram, normally people will write Arduino, and then these pins typically mean the pin in the software. Let's take a look at that. That sounds a little confusing. It is, but let's take a look at the schematic. So if I search Arduino pinout, should be able to come up with a good graphic right here. And we'll look at this one right here. So you can see on the 18 mega 328, pin 13, it's right here, with Arduino is actually pin seven. So that gets very complicated. So if I call pin seven in the software, I'm actually talking to pin 13 on the actual microcontroller. Why do they do that? Well, the Arduino team remapped the pins of the integrated circuit into pins that more naturally flowed on the printed circuit board when looking at this so that pins zero is here all the way up to 13, then a ground, and then over here we have our analog zero to five. They just made it even easier. You probably don't need to know this when prototyping, but it is something you should absolutely be aware of when you read schematics. Be sure to read what pin is what, and when they say what pin they're talking about, do they mean Arduino IDE pin mapping, or do they mean the integrated circuit pin mapping? Again, reading pins and reading schematics is not that difficult. It takes a little bit of practice, but there's plenty of resources online. And even knowing just these few basic things that I showed you, you're probably good to build a few simple circuits.